<laughs> and that's how you remember. <laughs> that's right, kids. You can pick up harmless animals that you learn about on my channel. <laughs> getting assaulted by these moths. Yeah, that is too cool. Perfect. Look at them both next to each yep. other. Wow. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> no. Mantis is, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to bring you home. <laughs> sorry, sorry, what was I trying to say? To bring to your screen. See how it's warming up those wing muscles. It's getting ready to fly away. Alright everybody and welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now today I am joined by some wonderful gentlemen. Please introduce yourselves. Sure. How are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato from Nature Here and Now. And we are Evan and Harrison from the Wildlife Brothers. Now today we are, of course, light trapping. And we are hoping to see all sorts of unique and interesting insect life to bring you at home <laughs> sorry, sorry, what was I trying to say? To bring to your screams at home. I was like, to bring you at home. Hand over. That, that, end, that ended there. So anyway, we're hoping to have all sorts of really cool and interesting wildlife. We've got some great brains between the, at least four of us. I don't know, maybe Gage can bring something to the table. <laughs> and we're hoping to see all sorts of stuff and teach you guys all sorts of stuff about Absolutely. what we see. And hopefully... We don't get bitten too many times by the creatures that show up. Oh, There's already up. been blood drawn. Already yep, been as, blood drawn. As of the filming of this shot. And we're set up right in, in our backyard for the mm -hmm. three of us. We're here in eastern Pennsylvania. Absolutely. Jack and Gage behind the camera are visiting us. And we're hoping to show them some of the invert life that we've fallen in love with. So oh, yeah. let's see what we can find. Yeah, let's Hopefully get it. there's more blood. Hopefully there's yep. more blood. Always. <laughs> Face the antenna, and there's these black spots, and I'm not that good. Cocoon, we but we can life. definitely get a more positive ID on what species of cone-headed Katie did. But a lot of times, people will mistake the, uh, the sounds that they make for crickets. Yeah. But actually, a lot of the insects you'll hear calling at this time of year are actually Katie did, like this guy. Oh, yeah. And you can see where they get the name conehead. That refers to a group of Katie dids, not just a species but he has that adorable little unicorn horn there. One of the many cool insects we're hoping to show you tonight. Take a look at that yeah. guy. And he was just uh, making his call, which could have been used as an alarm call or distress agitation call, but I don't think so. They don't usually do that when you're handling them. There we go. So that was pretty cool. Rub, rub his... Uh, femur and see if that does anything. Nope. Okay, now bring them closer to your face. Open your mouth. Should I put it on my face? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull one for Jack. Come on. I know. Come on, as Jack would say. Here. Come on, dear. <laughs> Come on, still dear. Still going for no Oh, oh there he goes. <laughs> no, here, I'll put them on your face for you. Thank you. Okay. This will be the thumbnail footage here. Yeah. Now, I've taken some wallops off of other groups of katydids, but I find the coneheads to be rather chill as it, as bites are concerned. My, uh, <laughs> Can my I do the prying intense... that nailed me earlier? Yeah, I can prying. My most intense bite was from a, kate, a cone mouse. Really? Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh now okay. it's engaged. Right on the gate. <laughs> we need you to sit here. I know. Come on, dear. Come on. Come on, dear. <laughs> Uh, I think what happens with a lot of these they super don't like the sensitive oils. insects, yeah, no, the yeah. oils and the salts my, on your skin, they're my like oily teenage face, even though I'm 20. Um, they definitely got that does Sicilian it. olive oil going. That's right. <laughs> Where are you? Take a look at the size of the slug, folks. <laughs> look at that. Oh my gosh. Big old hefty slug out here, Squall slugging around. Those little eyes. Nice little saddle here. Oh, squishy. Look at that. Really cool. Big slug out here looking for detritus to munch on. Some plant material and juicy deliciousness. Wow. <laughs> and that's how you remember. 
<laughs> That's right, kids. You can pick up harmless animals that you learn about on my channel. <laughs> yeah, okay, anyway. Look, look at this little sphinx moth. If it's resting enough, I can put it on my nose. A little sphinged. Oh, no, no. Okay, see how it's warming up those wing muscles. It's getting ready to fly away. Ah, wow. What a nice roost it's found. Never mind. But those are really, really interesting little, little moths. But take a look at this beetle. Now, funny story about grapevine beetles, which is what this is. Grapevine beetles have always thrown me for a loop because these little scarab larvae um, look a lot like lucanid larvae, which are stag beetles. And me, being the stag beetle fanatic that I am, every time I go out and look for these larvae, I always get the slip because I'm like... <gasps> Did I just find some stag beetle larva? No, it's grapevine beetles, which grapevine beetles are okay. No, they're very cool, but not quite as cool as stag beetles. But look at that beautiful little grapevine beetle. Now they're called grapevine beetles because the adults, they'll feed on our wild kind of grapes, muscadine berries and things like that. And of course, like all beetles, they go through complete metamorphosis and their larvae grow as they eat rotting logs and wood and things like that. I'm getting assaulted by these moths, but really nice little grapevine beetle, really pretty. So we've got a mantid fly here, and uh, sorry it's kind of silhouetted, but this is a white sheet, so that's how it goes. But if you look at the shadow, you can see those formidable forearms that are used for snatching up its prey, as it's doing right now, and it can begin to chow down. Now, what's really cool about mantid flies is the fact that they're a perfect expression of convergent evolution. Those look just like praying mantis arms, although they fold in a different direction than the mantises do. And they both are completely unrelated species. However, they serve the same purpose. Sometimes necessity is the best mother of invention and efficiency can sometimes be reached as the same destination via different routes. And if I may, we have a perfect example of that with a true mantis right here in hand. So you can see how similar these two animals are in their body structure. They do, you can actually see her, look at her, or him reaching out with those arms there. Look at that. How amazing is that to see two animals that really do look quite similar, even though they're completely separate species, different families even. Yeah, that is too cool. Perfect. Look at those both next to each yep. other. Wow. Yep. Obviously. <laughs> I know. Mantis is, oh, oh, oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Our mantis fly lives another day. Indeed. She didn't even Whoop. skip a beat. There she is. That's awesome. And look at those black eyes. Uh -huh. I've yet to figure out why their eyes turn black at night. I thought it was humidity. I thought it was temperature. Um, I've experimented with those at home. Um, not perfectly, but pretty well. And none of them played an influence. Uh, just the time. Just the time. I've turned out my lights indoors. Their eyes stayed green. I don't know what it is that causes their eyes to turn black. Same thing goes on with the katydids. Uh, during the day, their eyes will be red. At night, they're black. In some cases, they're green. <laughs> Jumped right, right on, on the, the Chris's camera. camera there. Look at that. You know what they have, have an ear? Here. Yeah. They have an ear at their chest. And why do you think that ear is there? Hearing. Well, <laughs> good answer. <laughs> As in, why is it located there on their body, or why? Well, like, why? Hold on, I want to grab my camera. Like, why? Do you... then, if I light this up, will it overexpose? No, it should be fine. I've got mine on there. What purpose do you think that ear serves? Whoop. I don't know. To protect against predation? Yes. By bats? Yes, bats. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know go. their evolutionary <laughs> timeline, so to say, uh -huh. but like Lepidoptera, uh -huh. they've been around for 190 million years, right? And then butterflies uh -huh. have been around for about 100 million years. Uh -huh. And, um, but they have ears 
that predate, way predate bats. So those ears are most likely to, you know, let them know about birds uh -huh. and pterosaurs. Uh -huh. So that's, to me, that's pretty awesome. That is super Can awesome. Can you imagine a species like this, not this exact crazy. one, but uh -huh. contemporary with pterosaurs? That gives you an idea of how old this lineage really is. Absolutely. And how successful these animals Absolutely. were to, to have persevered through so many time periods yep. that As we like everything to say, was out. To get these them. guys are true evolutionary masterpieces. That's why they've been able to persist for so long. And precisely why you see insects in completely different orders yep. right. with the same uh, hunting structures. Absolutely. You know who these guys are closer closest related to? What group, roaches. What, yeah, yeah, roaches. <laughs> there you go. That's basically a type of cockroach. Yeah. And you can tell if you look at their look thorax, at the head the and everything and stuff, it looks roachy. Yeah, it does look yeah, roachy. Yeah, just like a thinner incarnation. Yeah. Yeah, they are fascinating. And you can Truly. really see that lineage really kind of bust out in some of those flatter, like, bark mantises and things like right. that mm -hmm. that are just so much more squatty looking. You're like, oh, that really does look like a roach, huh? Beautiful insect. Yep. It's hard Crazy. to even conceptualize. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. It's going to get behind I me and I'm not going to be able to find it. It's never oh. a dull moment. You don't oh, have to go for it. Look at that. It's <laughs> right on my head. Right on there. You can crawl <laughs> right in your ear. Going in his ear. <laughs> yeah, I am. That's awesome. I thought this was a mantis, not an earwig. It really tickles yeah. me. Yeah. It's more like a nematode. A nematode, yeah. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. Yeah. A brain-eating brain. amoeba. Those, those, those <laughs> yeah. wouldn't have any purchase in there. Nope. Uh-oh, yeah, no brain go. there for it to eat. Nope. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Take a look at this beautiful, looks like a sub-adult Chinese mantis. Oh, take a look at this beautiful little insect. Absolutely. And my guess is that he's probably out here, maybe trying to take advantage of all the prey items that have been brought in by the light. Absolutely. Yeah, so these these are primarily sight predators, and they're using those, those antenna to navigate, but they're also using those impressive compound eyes to look for prey. And so this little one didn't fly over here because those wings are not fully developed yet, but perhaps in some of this vegetative surrounding areas uh, I saw some movement at our light trap and decided hey <laughs> looks like a good restaurant for me to hang out at and grab some food and these guys are really powerful predators as well Absolutely. you can see they have those front arms there and they'll reach out and grab something so lightning quick we were actually watching this this guy eat a little cricket earlier I think it was mm -hmm. they're just so powerful. Yeah, those raptorial arms are formidable and they're lined with super razor sharp spines that they can just whoosh, just plunge into the soft bodies of their primarily arthropod prey. But how beautiful is that little creature? You guys have been wanting to see more mantises, so more mantid, so I'm trying to include more. And they match my shirt today. Oh, that's where I noticed. Yeah. Couldn't have planned it better. New merchandise. Where I <laughs> there you go. Hooded mantis. Oh, easy. Whoa. Really, really cool. Always fun to see these awesome little mantises. Here, should I put oh, my face now? The classic shot. There you go. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Don't let it go too far. Oh, <laughs> hey. She didn't like that. Really cool. Well, we had a ton of really interesting stuff show up. We had some cool things like mantis flies. We had an actual mantis, some beetles, some moths, all sorts of crazy things. So, sadly, our time tonight has come to an end. So, the boys would all like to say goodbye. So, goodbye. Goodbye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, buy the new merchandise. Join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content. And of course, subscribe to these wonderful gentlemen. I will attach their channels in the description below so that you may do this. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and be sure to tune in next time for the next episode of Jack's World of Wildlife.